Greetings. It is revival season here at the Mount Vernon Baptist Church in Durham, North Carolina. And each Wednesday night, we will bring to you a preacher, a great, great preacher, man of God, pastor, uh, will come to us and inspire our hearts, uh, excite our hearts, and bring us into a season of revival. I invite you, my brother, my sister, to be with us each Wednesday as we, by way of YouTube or social media, bring to you our revival. Be in prayer that God will bless this movement, this revival, that God will use it as a way of using us to tell his blessed story. And my dear Mount Vernon, it is revival time. We thank God that last week we got off to a great start. Pastor White blessed our hearts, even uh, virtually blessed our hearts. Today, we come with another fresh, amazing preacher, the Reverend Dr. Wallace Baxter III. He is uh, the pastor of the Second Baptist Church Southwest in District Heights, Maryland. His bio is there for you, and I ask now, my brother, my sister, you take time to read it, but I want you to be in prayer and rejoice in the Lord while he and the people of the Second Baptist Church come before us. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.
Peace is where you are. Joy is where you are. And love is where you are. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Our God is a good God. Our God is a glorious God. Our God is a gracious God. Our God is a great God. Um, I certainly um, greet you with the love of Jesus Christ and greet you in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus, who is still the Christ. Um, uh, and I believe that there is something in particular that God would have us to share this day um, found in psalm 90 uh, the 90th psalm uh, the hebrew song book the collection of psalms and psalm 90 has something significant for us i believe that uh, it is something that will truly bless us indeed Psalm 90, um, beginning with verse 1, in the English Standard Version, you will find these words recorded. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. That's enough. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you. We praise you for this opportunity to gather together and worship. We thank you for this opportunity, God. And we need a word, not just a good word, but one that will do us all some good. God, hide me behind your empty cross so these your people see and hear all of you and none of me. Open my ears that I might hear. Regulate my mind that I might discern. Open my mouth that you might speak. Holy Spirit, do your thing, and we'll be careful to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It's in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus, who is still the Christ, that we pray. And every heart said, Amen. Again, Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2. Uh, says very simply, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I want to talk for a few moments about the present perfect God. The present perfect God. The present perfect God. God. Um, our God is a present God. Our God is a God that uh, the Bible says will never leave and will never forsake. Our God is the type of God that will be there through thick and through thin. And I believe there are some witnesses that are in the comfort of your home today or driving in your car, or perhaps uh, uh, even, even at a friend or family member's house that, that understands and knows without a shadow of a doubt that God is present. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible says that God is not just present, but God is omnipresent, which means that God is here at at the same time God is there, at the same time that God's with you, with your cousin, with your auntie, your uncle, your mama, your daddy, and your child. God is everywhere at the same time because God is a present God. God is a present God. Not only is God a present God, but God is a perfect God. If you just Think back in your own life. You come to realize and understand that God has shown up time and time again. That God has proven God's self to be perfect in every way. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that in our weakness, God is made 
perfect. In other words, God is able to meet us at the point of breaking and meet us at the point of despair and meet us at the point of despondency and meet us there and take us to where God wants us to be. I'm reminded of uh, Paul being on the ship, and the Bible says that Paul was on this ship, and 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 the storm began to rage, and the winds, and and all of that, and the ship began to literally break apart the ship began to be, be torn into pieces and Paul found himself making it at that moment on a broken piece of board from the ship he's floating with the waves and the currents of the sea and wouldn't you know that God met him right there on that broken piece of ship and carried him to dry land I tell you God's strength is made perfect in our weakness God is able to pick us up from wherever we are to take us to where God wants us to be because God is a perfect God God is a perfect God. God is a present God, and God is the type of God that, that is able to, to, to just be God regardless of where we find ourselves or what we find ourselves in. And so in this moment, in this text, we see a, a, a reflective psalm of sorts, one in which the psalmist is reflecting upon God's delivering power. God's ability to take uh, his children and, and cover them and, and be with them and protect them and get them to where they need to be. Uh, this psalm is, 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 first of all, a psalm of collective memory. It's a psalm of collective memory. When we look at this present perfect God, we see this psalm of collective memory because he says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place he, it, it's a collective psalm it's, it's it's not just saying lord you've been my dwelling place anybody can say lord you've been my dwelling place and that may be true but but the only way that i know without a shadow of a doubt that it's true is if he's not just your dwelling place but he's also my dwelling place it is a collective memory that's being expressed here in this psalm it harkens back to the time when Moses was leading the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity and leading them toward the promised land and in that moment God said that he would be a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night in other words he promised his presence with the people at all times leading them guiding them and directing them for he said that pillar of cloud and pillar of fire would not leave from its place in front of the people God always has a way of providing a sign for us in front of us leading us guiding us directing us letting us know exactly where God is at any moment in time in our lives Lord knows in this season that we're in right now we need God to take his place in front of us we need God to show us a sign that God is present and that God has not forsaken us because we've got a lot going on right now. We've got a health crisis going on. We've got race, racial disparities going on. We've got a whole lot going on, but our God is still faithful. Our God is still faithful because God has been our dwelling place just think about it you know your grandmama used to tell you that God uh, will hold your hand through the darkest of times yeah your grandmama said that too mine did as well why because God is a collective God a God of the collective experience God does not just want to be God for some God wants to be God for all the reality is that many of us have turned away from God and not allowed ourselves to experience the love and the and the safety that God wants to give to us and we allow ourselves to go a different way and go astray and so we feel as though those are the holy rollers over there those are the saints over there and we're the ain'ts over here but the reality is God says that he sent his son not for y'all but for all so that all might be saved and be in relationship with God because God is a God of the collective 
hear all this divisive language uh, spewed from uh, this house called White here in Washington, D.C. We hear all of this divisiveness and divisiveness and divisive language coming out of the mouth of the president of these United States. And, and, And the reality is that that is not God's intent for humanity. No, no, no. It's not God's intent for humanity. The reason I know that it's not God's intent for humanity is because God created all of us and made all of us fearfully and wonderfully. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that God desires for us to be in relationship with him him and God does not is no respecter of persons and treats us all equally and fairly this psalm is a psalm of collective memory not only is a psalm of collective memory but this psalm is also representative of a consistent dwelling a consistent dwelling is right here in the text it says Lord you have been our dwelling place uh, you you have been our dwelling place. Now, I know that we said that God is a present God. We said that God is a perfect God. But, but, but God is also a present perfect God. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you, you got to come to the classroom with me for a second. God is a present perfect God. That, 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 that's a tense, a, a grammatical tense. This present perfect verb tense, this, this tense of the present perfect is, is unique. It is an aspect that's used to express the past event that has present implications or consequences. The Bible says that God has been our dwelling place. Not that God was our dwelling place, not that God is our dwelling place, but that God has been our dwelling place. And that that has been uh, phraseology does not just cease with yesterday. Uh, that has been means that if God has been our dwelling place, that means there's some consistency with God's dwelling, which means that God always wants to be our dwelling place. If God was our dwelling place yesterday, it means that God is our dwelling place today, which means that God desires to be our dwelling place tomorrow. How do you know that, preacher? I know that because God said that himself. God said, just call me I am that I am. That 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 phraseology is the tetragrammaton. It means that I was who I was. I is who I is, and I will be who I will be. In other words, God is God yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Bible says he's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. In other words, God is the type of God that is able to be God in every situation, under every condition, regardless of the people and personalities, regardless of the situation and circumstance, regardless of the players that come to the table. God is God and God desires to be a consistent dwelling for us. God desires to be a consistent dwelling. He's a present perfect God. He he doesn't leave his authority in yesterday in yesterday. But he brings it into today. And by faith, that same authority will come in tomorrow. For our God is sovereign. Our God is holy, perfect in and of himself. Our God is holy, powerful in and of himself. Our God is holy, gracious in and of himself. Our God is God, and there is nothing that can take that away from our God. So we see in this psalm, uh, this collective memory, we see in this psalm this consistent dwelling. But then finally, and perhaps most importantly, In this psalm, we see God's ceaseless power. Uh, I told you our God was a present perfect God, which means that God is always in season. God is always in tune. God is always on the case. The Bible says before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth, and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Now, in the in the original Hebrew, that 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 translation goes a little more like 
this uh, before you gave birth to the mountains, uh, before you uh, gave birth to the earth and to the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In other words, it is as though everything comes from God. Everything emanates from God. If everything comes from God and everything is made for God, then that means that God is ceaseless in God's power because it is a creative power. You remember in the beginning it said God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. Ex nihilo, out of nothing. God created the heavens and the earth. And in this moment, we need to understand that God is still using that creative power in our lives. God is still moving the way God desires to move in our lives. Grandmama put it this way. God may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. God may not show up right when you think God ought to show up, but God is always right on time. Some folk are waiting for November 3rd to get here, waiting for this election to take place, thinking that through the election God is going to move. But I got news for you. God has been moving ever since the beginning of time. And if God has been moving ever since the beginning of time, then that same God is moving right now. And that same God is going to be moving come November 3rd. In other words, even though we're going through some things right now, now does not mean that God is not going through the birthing process right now. Does not mean that God is not forming some new rivers for your life. It does not mean that God is not forming some new mountains in your life. It does not mean that God is not making your world brand new right now. The birthing process takes time. And for, for, for us as humans, it takes some nine months for a child to come forth but some things in your own life has taken time to come forth that degree that you have it did not come overnight but it took years of schooling to get to where you are that job that you have it didn't come overnight but it took some time working and toiling and stressing out over projects to get to that place that you are right now that husband been a wife that you got they did not come overnight but it took some time for you to massage that relationship to get to the place where you are now I stopped by to tell you God has ceaseless power he's the present perfect God it does not matter what you're in right now our God is able our God is able, our God is able to take you from where you are to where God wants you to be. His power is good yesterday. His power is good today. His power is good tomorrow. All you have to do is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and God will, God will, God will direct your path. Is there anybody out there today that knows God is able, knows God is able to take you from where you are to where God wants you to be? He's done it before, and if he's done it before, I know without a shadow of a doubt, God can do it again because God is, God is, God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. God will, God will never come short of God's word. He is God, and beside God, there is none other. Say yes, say yeah, say yes, say yeah, say yes, ah, yeah. God is God. God is God. 
And beside God, there is none other. He is a present perfect God, which means whatever God's done in the past, his check's still good today. God never falters nor fails. He'll never renege. He'll never go back on a promise because God is God. What an amazing evening we've had, my brother, my sister. And we thank God for this preacher uh, not sparing himself and not sparing the gospel. It would not be uh, right to end these revival meetings without issuing an opportunity for someone to come to the Lord. You've been watching these and we have no idea how far reaching these uh, services are going. But if perchance you are in need of a savior and you've not claimed the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and he does not own you as his, perhaps tonight is your opportunity. You are here viewing this, listening to me. You've listened to the preacher you have now come to the grips with your own need of a Savior. Virtually, I invite you to contact me. Email pastor at mvbcdurham.org. Pastor at mvbcdurham.org. I invite you to do that. I'd like to have a conversation with you. Just know that the Lord Jesus Christ stands with outstretched arms waiting for you. I look forward to hearing from you. Blessings on you.